In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. For about a year now, Phyllis and I have been watching the Father Brown mysteries on Netflix. It's all about this Roman Catholic priest in a small English village who solves murders, robberies, and all other manner of scandal each week. The thing is, just when I think I know who did it, Father Brown figures out it's someone else. I love a good mystery when there's lots of clues to solve. And that's the way I want us to think about this morning's gospel reading from John. It is the wedding of Cana in Galilee, and at first glance we may think we know what's going on and what's going to happen because we've all heard the story before. Jesus turns the water into wine, and at one time or another, like me, you may have looked at a glass of water and thought, that's a pretty good trick, almost as good as walking on it. But why did Jesus change the water into wine? And what were Jesus and the disciples doing at that wedding in the first place? And did they run out of wine just so Jesus could perform a miracle? And finally, why does John call this the third day when if you actually read from the first chapter of John forward, it should be the fifth day since the start of Jesus' ministry happened earlier? All of these questions and more have answers in the story of the wedding at Cana, and we just have to pay attention to the clues. And this is exactly what John wants us to do. Pay attention to what is happening Jesus is at the wedding because that was the socially acceptable thing to do in his day. Everyone was invited, and it would have been considered rude for Jesus and the disciples not to attend. It would have been Jesus' responsibility to escort his mother Mary because likely by this time Joseph has died and Mary is a widow, and so the eldest son would escort his mother. So it would not be that unusual for Jesus to be attending a wedding. Nor should we think that running out of wine at a wedding was any big deal. Weddings were big events. The wedding feast usually lasted for days. People would come and go and eat and drink, and the food would run out as well as the wine, especially if the host did not come from a wealthy family. I doubt seriously that God made the wine run out just so Jesus could perform his first miracle. God doesn't work that way any more than God would have chosen to make someone sick just so Jesus could heal them. For a long time, I thought that Jesus' response to his mother sounded almost disrespectful, which is not something you would have expected from the Messiah. When Mary tells Jesus that the wine has run out, he says to his mother, Woman, my time has not yet come. And let me assure you that if I had ever called my mama woman, well, let's just put it this way. If my mother had wanted me to turn, if she today wanted me to turn water into wine, well, by George, I better just give it my best effort. But a little biblical research this week Help me to understand what was going on here. You see, in Hebrew, the word for woman is actually a sign of respect for any female. And it is the rest of Jesus' response that really holds the clues for us in understanding this story. Jesus tells his mother, my time has not yet come. Throughout the Gospel of John, Jesus will repeat this message to his disciples over and over again. When Peter proclaims that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, Jesus tells him not to tell anyone. When Jesus heals the sick, even raises Lazarus from the dead, the disciples are amazed. And don't you know they just wanted to go out and tell everyone they saw what they had seen that day? But almost always Jesus warns them not to tell the people what they had seen. His time had not yet come. And the question is always, but when would be the right time? I remember cranking ice cream with my grandfather when I was growing up. We would set this old oak wooden bucket 
out on the back steps of the house in Mansfield, Louisiana, and we would all take turns cranking the handle, pouring ice and salt in and watching for what seemed to be way too long. And just about the time my arm would be about to fall off, I would think, I'd ask my grandfather, is it ready? And he would say, it's not time yet. Jesus' time had not yet come. There was so much more work to be done. Jesus turned the water into wine that day, and it was a miracle. Later, he would heal the sick, cast out demons, and even raise the dead. And there were those who wanted to proclaim Jesus king because he could do all of this. I mean, it was an impressive feat. But this was not the reason Jesus had come. God did not send his son so that whosoever believed that Jesus could perform miracles would have everlasting life. No, all the miracles, including the wedding at the, in Cana of Galilee, pointed to that moment when it was his time. That moment that began on a cross and then began again on the third day with an empty tomb, revealing the very of glory of God as life overcame death Love overcame hate, and there was resurrection. We believe in Jesus who heals because he is our Savior. We believe in Jesus who forgives us because he is our Savior. We believe in Jesus because he is here this morning and at every moment of our life because he is our Savior. And we give our hearts and our lives and our souls to this Savior. And it is then that Jesus' time comes once more. And we see the very glory of God and we believe. Look for the clues of Christ all around us. When you think, why is God not working? Ask yourself, am I looking in the right place? When you feel lonely, separated from Christ's love, and in need of forgiveness. Look toward a Savior who never went anywhere. Believe in our Savior. It's not a mystery to be solved. It's a mystery of faith. And the time has come. Amen.